Well hello there, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video guys we are going to be doing a lot of stuff in my shrimp room because I thought I'd try and make some longer form content for you guys where I show you stuff I do in my shrimp room every day. Right? So what the plan is for me to do is to come into my shrimp room every single day, do something, take some footage and then save all those little bits and pieces that I do through the week and make one bigger video for you guys at the weekend because I think you'll enjoy that content a little bit more than the short ones like short videos and whatever else these videos will be a little bit longer I would imagine I think they're probably going to be maybe an hour or two longer but yeah nowadays long form content is where it is it is where it's at right so yeah let's give this a go um, guys, I'm going to make it perfectly clear from the start as well. You guys all know I'm disabled. You're going to see me being disabled as well. Right? So sometimes I'll be able to do stuff, sometimes I won't. And I think that's what's probably going to make a channel work and stand out more than anything else is it's going to be about me. It's called YouTube for a reason right? because you guys are watching me. right? And you're watching my experiences and stuff in the shrimp room. So. Yeah, let's uh, get a handle on this and see where we go first. More coffee. Okay, shrimplets, I thought this was a very good image to start off my, I don't know, what would you call it, my new series? Look at all these shrimp going berserk. Obviously, a female has molted in here. And all these guys are, have been looking for her. Now, I have, in my personal experience, I have seen females get the zoomies like this as well. So it might just be something that's released from the molt. Like some kind of pheromone or something that's released that sets them all off right so i'm not 100 percent sure this is only male specific like we think it is but hey ho that is the way it goes right so i thought this would be an excellent thing to show you first in our new series right so i think um what we must do here is decide on a little plan right so what i want to do guys is is actually do stuff every day in my shrimp room that i naturally do right so we're going to be looking at things like lighting in my room uh, resetting tanks and all that kind of good stuff because there is an awful lot of things in my shrimp room that I think need adjusted or need fixed like for example guys I've never been quite happy with this rack and set up here with these tanks in this uh, format where they're on the shelf long ways I want them to be turned around right? and it's, it's simply because the shelf is not structurally um, optimized for holding so much weight if you have the tanks basically like this over part of the shelf it's easier if i show you right? let me pick you up all right so this is the end view you can see here right? and you can see my tanks here you see along the front looks all fine and dandy and then you go to the side here and you realize whoa 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 what's going on here now this is not the best way to have a tank like this set up here because there is no real strength along the center beam here if you can see just underneath right so you can probably see here how much the wood is bending from side to side so I think a better idea for this would be for these tanks to be spun around endways so that the ends of the tanks are actually on these steel supports here right so that is one of the jobs so here is another great example of another job and that is my lighting right I am guys I'm actually more than happy with these cheap lights that I bought here so I'm not really sure how much I need these other lights on top let me show you an example look how, how bright these ones are right so I've actually changed the configuration of these so that they actually face each other a couple of cable ties maybe you can see a little bit better from the side like this and yeah most of the light heads down the way and these are only 10 watts each these right so that's 20 watts look how bright my tank is underneath and this is a bigger deeper tank right so I'm, I think I'm going to switch over most of my tanks to this I do love LEDs like the ones that we have on the top the the security lights but i think in general guys just for saving money and whatever else this is probably the better way to go now and i'm lucky that i bought a lot of these so that is probably one of the projects that we will see as well let's have a look over here because these tanks are on the same lights right and you can see here these are perfectly well lit and this is just 20 watts across two lights two tanks even Alright Shrimplets, so here is another great example of something that I must fix and that is this. You can see how poorly lit this tank is here and it's not the light, it's the actual amount of stuff that's on the surface. Now, I tend to not feed this tank as much as my other tanks, even though there's larger crayfish in here because the crayfish do actually eat the plants. Now the problem that we have is most of these are floating plants and they're in the top layer and the crayfish are down here, right? So I need to think of a solution where we can actually make it so that my crayfish 
can actually get to the top somewhere in the middle without escaping. You can see how much of a difference it makes when I clear some of the light, some of the weeds and stuff, so more light can get through. You can see one of the bigger crayfish there. And yeah, this is this this is just giving you an idea of, of some some of the little jobs that I must try and attempt to do. I'm gonna see if it will bite this today. Oh maybe not. Okay guys, so this is one of the things I wanted to show you in one of the first videos and that is since I did stop doing larger water changes I've noticed specifically that my moss is growing super super superb right so don't take my word for it let's uh, go across nearly all of my tanks and you'll see what I mean here let's zoom in camera will focus look at this moss growth but I've never ever in my life keeping shrimp had moss grow as nice as this right so if my little chair here plays ball we should be able to slide this along and you should be able to see my moss as well in my other tanks guys and it's just I don't know what it is seems to be slightly less water changes has made my moss grow like the clappers look at it let's see let's go along this tank this is one of my favorite tanks just for looking at it with the moss because just of the way it grows let me plan up and you'll see what I mean look at that isn't it wonderful you can see all the baby shrimp in there and if you go along one more along here down again it's the same thing right? and it's the same thing in every single tank right so that can't be coincidence and I think it is guys water changes combined with the fact that I'm no longer putting loads and loads of food in the tank so these tanks are becoming super 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 crystal clear and very very clean and you're seeing it as a result in the moss all right guys, let me show you another example because proof is in the pudding as they say, right? So let's have a look at this moss here. If you go back to my earlier videos of this tank where basically there was no shrimp in here, you remember that this tank was absolutely choked full of algae, right? And all I did was reduce the feeding a lot and this is the result. Look at this moss. Look how well it's grown. Right, I'm gonna pull you to the side to a new tank that is next to it, just to show you again that this isn't one off. Look at that moss. Look how well it's grown. Right, is that enough proof? You want more? Let me show you. I'm going to lift you up. There's a lot of glare in this tank, but you can see here again, look how much moss there is. Let's have a little zoom in. I want to show you how healthy it's grown, guys. Healthy moss means lots and lots of shrimplets and yeah just a healthy aquarium in general all right guys let's uh, briefly talk about why i think this is working because i think that's quite important to try and explain some of what i think is actually happening in the tank so the less food that we put in the water right there is less less pollution actually happening in the tank right and to me personally it's very very noticeable that my water is crystal clear right it wasn't always like this guys it wasn't always like this at all sometimes i'd do a water change and, and the water would be kind of yellow and I'm not talking about tannins I'm talking about the water just not being clean right so by not putting so much uh, food into the tank we're actually making the tank much cleaner as a result right and this also has another knock-on effect because the tank is cleaner we don't actually have to do as many water changes right so this is key to caradina and bee shrimp keeping in general because the less water changes that we do in here the longer our tanks last right because there is a potential hardness there's a pH in our tanks that's built into the substrate right and when you add water to it the soil actually affects the water and it adjusts the pH right and over time if you keep on doing loads and loads of water changes what happens is you dilute that pH more you dilute it a little bit more and you dilute it a little bit more right? so eventually there will come a point when your pH starts to rise and right? normally in a tank this will take maybe one and a half to two years right but if you do it this way, and I'm very new to doing it this way, but I can see the magnificent benefits of doing it this way already, that if you do it this way, your pH stays lower for longer, and in theory, guys, your tank should last forever, basically. Right? So as long as you keep to these principles of doing no water changes, only top up with reverse osmosis water, and feeding just a little bit once a week, right? gauge it with how many shrimp you have, just see, see what they eat, right? Don't overfeed the tank. And then see how your tanks respond because it, as I always say, right, proof is in the pudding. 
and you're really the only people that will be able to tell yourself if this actually works right so give it a go so in general guys I have my Caradina set up um, nailed I think I have it nailed now right and it's taken me a long time to get to this point and some people have told me to do it this way for years and I thought you know I've known better and I've um, once enough people start to tell you try it this way Mark then you think maybe there is something in it so I gave it a go and it really really does work right when I'm talking about Caradina I'm talking about bee shrimp in particular not a manos and whatever else right so yeah give it a go that way guys that was talking about there once we switch all these tanks around up on that top shelf around there we'll have another three or four tanks up there there's space there five tanks six tanks so you can see we have lots and lots of room to play with and then then we have next door as well where we're going to set up even more tanks in there guys and i have some secret tanks that i've never shown you yet but yeah you have all that coming and guys let me know in the comment section below if you're going to enjoy this type of format where i'm talking more and showing you the results instead of trying to make a 10 minute video with everything crammed into it because yeah I, I personally don't like those type of videos i find myself watching more and more for example camping videos that are like one hour long two hours long you know if you, as long as you have the time and you have the interest you will watch longer content right so that is my thinking behind doing this all right guys we are going to test this camera because yeah I've had people tell me that this camera is the best quality camera I've got on. Yeah, I've, I've not been using it because I simply had it set up wrong. I'm not going to lie. I had it set up wrong to the point where all the things that you're meant to do for the like settings and stuff, they were so badly mixed up, right? I couldn't use the camera. And so, for example, right, we're going to test something today. And I've just discovered that there's babies in this tank here, right? So these are blue bolts. See a lovely female there. Let's see how good we can zoom into this girl here. With digital zoom, that's fair enough. For for the distance that we are far as far away as we are, that's a really nice looking little shrimp light, right? So let's see. There's bigger ones in here. Let's see if we can see them. So these are an older batch here. And these are not like perfect pictures, but yeah, I have a little secret thing up my sleeve here. This actually has a macro lens built into it as well. But these pictures here are okay just for me to show you off the cusp of uh, what this camera can do. Right? So let's uh, have a look and see if we can see newborns because yeah, I did notice there's newborns in here today as well. I can see one near, I think it is a shrimp anyway, one near the front right there. Let's see what this camera can do if we can see it. So I can tell that that is a shrimp, but it's just not very clear. So let's take off this lens and we'll see what it looks like with the macro lens. All right, guys, this is with the macro lens. Right? And remember, this is just your standard point and shoot camera. So it's never going to be as good as my dedicated macro camera that I have. But I thought this would be a good test for it. So we can clearly see a little blue bolt there. Let's see how close we can actually get to it. That's not too bad. It's a little bit of a focus. Maybe if I tilt the camera up a wee bit more, it will... Let's see. It's not too bad. Not too bad. It's, it is blurry. But at least you can tell that's a shrimp. So that's not too bad for a point-and-shoot camera. This main camera that I'm using to actually film myself. Maybe if we go backwards a little bit. Like there. You I mean you can clearly see that that is a blue bolt there. Let's go backwards a little bit and see if that helps a little bit with the focus. Maybe we're too close. And this is what I mean guys with the setup. That's not going to focus at all. So maybe we need to go closer. Let's see. So I'm going to try and get as close as I can. Maybe we should drop the level a little bit. I'll drop it and get right back. Alright guys, I can clearly see it this way here. So the camera's a little bit lower. Let's have a little zoom in and see how close we can get. Now the thing I have to bear in mind with this is that this has like a telescopic lens in it, so it's going to hit the glass. <laughs> but we'll see how close we can get to it. That's fairly close. That's, that's good enough to, for me to be able to tell that that is a shrimp. Let's see, can I get any? Oh, I was going to try and see if we can actually focus a little bit better, but it's not going to be the case. Let's... Uh, Try looking at a shrimp, we're going to move the camera along. Oh wow. I'm actually very impressed. 
I actually can't believe I didn't use this camera for more than a year because I couldn't work out the focus. Let's have a little zoom in and see. Wow. Now let's see if I press this, will it focus even more? <laughs> it's always going to be hard with, with stuff that moves. But yeah, that is such a good picture. It's not crystal clear, but then we have to remember there's all the glare and stuff behind us. And we're shooting from an angle at the shrimp as well, but yeah, that is such a nice image. Very, very good. So guys, this is what I'm going to show you in my videos. I'm going to be looking at stuff like this, doing little projects, looking at little shrimp babies and whatever else. So I wanted to show you this tank here because I believe that there's nothing better than seeing baby shrimp if you're a shrimp keeper. And this tank has a lot of little baby shrimp, so let's have a little look. I wanted to go from this side first because I just want to show you the, the glass and stuff. All these little shrimplets, you see them? And yeah, it's a really good sign of a really, really healthy tank if you have lots and lots of baby shrimp. There's a lot at the top here that you probably can't make it on camera, but let me just go up a little bit more. See, like it's there. And there's like ones further across, the camera's just starting to pick up. And yeah, the glass is like this all over this tank on the inside. So yeah, I thought I'd show you that. Remember what we were talking about before, guys? Proof is in the pudding, right? So yeah, I've noticed a big increase in my baby shrimp survival since I stopped doing water changes and I decreased the amount of food that I was putting into the tank. So I'm only adding one solid piece of food once a week on a Saturday. And that is it. So we're going to have to kind of... Wait, what's this? Wait a minute, I have to put your lens on. We're going to have to kind of come up with uh, a way to do this, guys, so you can roughly see what day it is for me. I'm putting the, your lens on so you're not blinded by the light. And we're going to have to come up with a way that you guys can tell what day it is for me instead of all, instead of all these clips just being mashed together so there's some kind of coherence to them because yeah, I can kind of just mumble on and whatever else and if you don't know what day it is for me then you're probably uh, we'll have like a never a never ending reoccurring nightmare of Mark Shrimp tanks just blabbering for the, forever and going off on tangents, oh my god but I'm the best filmer ever aren't I? I'm the best at filming, I can just tell yeah so I think what we'll do guys is if the day changes I'll try and put the, if I remember because I have no brain, I have no memory. I'll try and put the day at the bottom of the first new clip. So after today, for example, tomorrow might be... The next clip will have Thursday underneath or something like that. Just so you guys can get a gist of uh, how this is going to work. It, right? So yeah, hopefully we have something that's going to be uh, workable for me and for you. And you yeah, guys, you don't have to watch all of it. You don't have to watch all of it. Once what I often do when I watch longer form content is... I'll watch some of it because often in this type of uh, video there'll be content and ideas in there that you won't get in other types of video where they, they might be able to help you more for example like for example I might drop a, a tip or a hint that I use one day in a tank that you've never seen before that I haven't mentioned in another video right that I actually use in real time in the shrimp room right, so that is the way it's going to work right so you can always go back and forward watching videos over or stopping them at specific bits like I do as I said with camping stuff and uh, yeah let's give this format a try alright shrimplets it is the next day and I've kind of been putting this off for a little while let me see if we record let's go alright guys it is the next day and yeah I've been putting this next job off for a little while just because yeah I'm thinking this is going to be one of those ones that is really really difficult for me to do physically so you know I've been putting it off for such a long time that it's kind of hindering my shrimp room a little bit because I now, I now have more tanks that are empty lying outside and stuff they need to come in here and I don't have a place up here for them so the orientation of these tanks up here as you can see by the 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 tank that I'm pointing to here they, they are long ways I don't want them this way because they're not fully supported properly I want them to go lengthways like this so that the, this end here is actually on the end beam of the actual rack itself. So I, I'm doing it for stability and it will mean 
that I'm able to add more tanks up here, right? Because this, the, the top shelf is the exact same size as the bottom shelf here, right? So we have six tanks there versus only three in the top for the same space. So I want to turn them around and, uh, you know, there's going to be issues with it as well because removing the lights and stuff will be the easy part. The thing that's going to be very difficult for me to do is, I've, guys, I have to take water out of it and I have to put water back in, which is might be an issue for my back, I'm not sure because it, yeah, it is anything that's kind of repetitive where I'm going like this, this kind of action the slightest thing will set my back off right, so I've left it to the end of the day because my back was a little bit sore this morning I've left it to the end of the day where my back has been okay so let's get on with this, I'm going to remove the lights, I'll probably put you guys over there so you can actually watch me do some stuff okay, unplug the lights and let's see if we can shift these tarps Alright guys, you can probably see my issue here, I'm, I'm just coming around the front, the camera's at the back. We're going to try and um, unplug all our cables and stuff here because you can see that I have just a mess of stuff here. And I need to move this just to be able to get into the tanks because as I said yesterday, we are actually going to change all of our lights over to the newer ones that I mentioned before. Right? So this can just drop down there, this plug as well, we go to the side. And this is all stuff I'll have to try and pull out and, you know, cut the cable ties and whatever else. Right, so let's get on to the next bit here. Oh, Because oh. I have that one to remove and then there's one along at the very end here. It's on a long extension. If I can reach it, that is. So awkward. This is why I want to change this stuff because I, I simply can't get to the, the things. So I'm going to try and pull it along this side. Well, there's a way over here as well. So I have two giant extension cables on here just for these three lights. So this is partially why I want to change it. So that's them off. <coughs> Let me come around there and I'll grab you because we're going to try and lift this light off of here now. Yeah, don't laugh, but I keep on forgetting where the record button is on this camera. Um, I need to get these lights down here, so with a bit of luck guys, it's as simple as just pulling out here. Please back, don't go. Don't go. Uh, yeah, so we're hitting a problem here already. I wonder if I could tilt them a little bit. Oh, back, please, just, just come out nicely, please. Yeah, I can feel it stuck on something. So this is why I don't like showing you too much stuff like this on my channel, because yeah, I really, really struggle physically to do this kind of thing. You know what it feels like? It feels like one of the plugs is stuck or something. Or maybe one of the lights was in the tank. <laughs> right, so I have these tanks covered. Let's see. Oh yes! Oh. Right, so there's these lights done right and I'm going to use these lights in other tanks and other builds where we specifically need an LED over the top but not like this, it's just too difficult to work with. Right, so let's get rid of these. Alright guys, let's get this started. Let's get this in here. Right, so I'm going to try at least emptying at least three quarters of the tank and I'm going to check to see if I can at least budget. Right, so let's get going. Right, shrimp, let's, the moment of truth, right, I, I couldn't really find a good angle for you to sit on. But um, we're going to have to go with this. Hopefully, I mean, the waters are way down here. Hopefully, I'm actually able to move this because, yeah, I'm not so sure it was a good idea for me to do this today. My back is like sore, sore. So, please, pray for Mark in the comment section below. Please let us be easy. We might actually have to push it backwards to turn it because of the space. But let's see. Oh, ah, it was it was hard to begin with. And the only things I'm really looking for here, guys, as well, is stones, little bits of gravel, snail shells underneath. Make sure that there's none of that stuff. Right, so we're going to turn it. Just take my time, uh, as much time as I can take. <laughs> right, so all the filtration and everything is still on. I'm just trying to do it so I'm making it as easy as uh, I'm shaking when I'm doing it. As easy as possible for myself. Right, so I'm not worried about what's inside, like as in where the filters are. As long as they're on the glass, I'm going to fill it back up, they're still working, that's fine by me. 
it will do until tomorrow. I just want to get this orientation thing oh, done and dusted and out the way, guys. Done and dusted and out the way. And I think that is good. I think that's quite good. Like this. So this is the first one. Right, and I actually have to physically fill this back up before we can start the second one because I don't have enough buckets to do them all at once. So there's a tiny gap up here. Let me pan you up a little bit. There's a tiny gap up here that I can probably fit a half a litre container into. And I'm going to have to do that for about 40 litres. But at least I'll probably be able to get the bucket to sit up here though. Right, so let's do that next. Guys, it's going to be the moment of truth for this stuff as well, right? So as I said, the, everything that's in the tank, the orientation is fine until tomorrow because I can just put my arms in like this and change stuff. But right now we're going to have to try and fit all of our stuff in through this little gut there. And yeah, we have three buckets of stuff to get through. So with a little bit of luck. Oh my God, Mark, what are you doing to yourself? With a little bit of luck. We might be able to do it like this. Yeah, so I've actually decided, guys, that I'm no longer going to do racks this high anymore. I just physically can't. My back is so sore right now. Uh, you'll see that in future builds as well because I have tanks that I haven't shown you yet up in my little office where yeah, I'm not going above like chest height for any of my stuff anymore. So I'll get these uh, filled, or I'll get this one filled and I'll be back in like five hours to, to, to start the next tank. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh my god. Right guys, so that was the first one done and refilled. Yeah, and I'm really feeling my back. It's just the weight that's the issue actually. And all the things I do, it always seems to be the way that causes me the problem that stops me doing more stuff is just simply the weight, right? I, I have a limit that I've been set by a surgeon that's just five kilos, and a lot of these buckets and stuff will be 10 15 kilos. I think it's okay if you're doing it once, one single time, lifting something and then stopping like instantly. But when you're doing repetitive stuff, your bark can get really, really bad. So, yeah, but that's nothing that Nest Cafe won't fix, guys. You know what I'm saying? Mark Trim Tank sponsored by Nest Cafe. Guys, you know what to do, get onto the website and tell them about Mark Trump Tanks being sponsored by Nice Cafe. And they file a lawsuit and whoever else. I'm going to have a rest for a second, drink some coffee, and then I'm going to start on that second tank. And by the way, guys, I actually discovered something. You know how we were using the half litre jug here? Well, the full litre jug actually fits as well, so that sped up the little filling back in job by a half, right? So yeah, let's get some coffee and let's get going again. Mmm. Oh my god, that was a bad idea. Right, so this is tank two. It's got lids on it because I don't want splashing on the roof, which um, is always a good idea. So we'll take them off for now. And uh, yeah, let's start to fill our buckets because I reckon, guys, we'll try this time with, uh, we'll try and move the tank after two buckets. Just, it might be possible, it might not be. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's start to fill this up. Alright then, let's see, right, so this tank is half full now, so I reckon this tank is probably about 50 litres, so it has a lot of soil in here, and yeah, this probably weighs about 20, 25 kilos, something like that, right, so it's going to be a test to see if I can move it, it's, you know what it is guys, is, is this video is about Mark does stupid things, I know it's probably better for myself if I remove another 10 litres, but it's just the chore of putting it all back in, it takes forever, so... Let's see if I can do it. If I can't do it, guys, you'll never see this part of the video, ever. Let's see. I'm just going to make sure that there's no stones or nothing, like we talked about before. Snail shell, specifically. Let's see, can I move it? Oh, yes! Oh, that didn't sound good. You little, you little mother! But you know what it is? There's stainless steel valves in this rain. I thought I heard it scratching like a stone on the bottom. But it wasn't. It was not. It did not happen. 
So the only thing I really have to worry about here is getting cables caught up in different bits because I have my cable in like the worst ever here. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an, an absolute idiot for trying to do this with this. I'm an idiot, guys. Don't do as I do. <laughs> right, so I'm actually going to put all the stainless steel cables and stuff over the top just now because I'll have to fix all this tomorrow. Can't have them in the in the tank for obvious reasons. So let's get them just out of the way just now until I get this oh, moved over and into position. That wasn't a good sound either. And so I think, I think guys that we can have a finger width gap between the tanks which is good. So this is it in position I think. Yeah that'll do for me. As I said, don't do as I do, because I'm a dumbass. Well, it's, it's actually very dark over in this corner, right? But I'm going to put the water up here, and we're going to put in a few jugs of water together, guys. Oh, oh, oh my God. I'm going to put in a few jugs together. By the way, if you never see me again after this video, you know why my back probably just snapped right in half right so let's get the water I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the tank to stop spillage and the way I do this guys right is lift up like this into the tank and I'm not going to pour it in guys I'm going to place this in like this until it's floating and then I'm going to basically turn the jug right so there's as minimal flow and whatever else you want to call it in the tank there's minimal disturbance. Right, so I'll be back in a few minutes once we've done this and we'll start the next tank. Oh, that was tough filling that last one up. Right, more coffee. Mm. It's so sweet because we run out of sweeteners and the, the kids use the liquid sweetener and they put way too much in. Mm. But let's get this done. Let's get this last tank done and dusted. Hopefully guys will be able to just remove half the water in this one and do the same as the previous one. As I said, all the things with the lights, plants and all the interior of the tanks we can do tomorrow. Right? We can finish off uh, fixing the lights and stuff tomorrow. I just need to do this and stop I think. Operation place. This is the last tank that we have to remove for the day. And I've already checked the top of the work area for snails. Right? So the ones that you want to watch out specifically are Malaysian trumpet snails right because you may as well be putting a stone under your tank if you move your tank on top of it right so the other ones like bladder snails, ramshorn snails aren't quite as bad but you get the gist right so this tank was smaller than the last one so I should be able to move this one quite easily but um you know me <laughs> it's no chance of luck and I'm trying guys when I'm pushing and stuff as well I'm not pushing dead in the center panel of the pen I'm trying to push like in the corner areas and like because uh, yeah, ideally you should take out as much water as you can. You hear that there? That was a snail, little trumpet snail. Ron's horn snail even, not a trumpet snail. So this might be an issue. This is very short, this cable. Let's turn it, see if it's long enough. Yeah, because I'll have to try and fix up uh, all my tubing and stuff as well over the next couple of days and yeah guys what I'm basically doing here is I'm just trying to get it as level and flush and straight as possible now because now we have space for a few more tanks in here should be able to get another three in here which seems like impossible but if I can get three in the bottom I can get three in the top I hope it sounded bad didn't it <laughs> three in the bottom anyway let's get doing there oh we that is us done. Oh, guys, I am wrecked. I am wrecked. I'm not just my back, it's not just so I'm physically wrecked. <laughs> right, so I want to show you something because this could be an issue. Let's have a little look. Let me pan you around and you'll see. Remember we said before that we can fit six tanks in here. Well, I, I don't think that's actually quite possible. 
Right, so when you look at the tanks that are in up there in there already, right, these top two tanks at the end are much bigger than the two tanks below. Right, so I think these ones are maybe 20, 30 litre tanks, these two specifically. And this top one here is a 60 litre tank and you can clearly see the difference in size. Right, so the one next to it is a 50 litre tank and as I said this one's probably about 30 litre something like that. So again there's a big difference in size and, and why this matters guys is because by the time you come along to the middle here you can see it's starting to overlap. Well there's no real gap between these tanks, there's a tiny gap at this end over here. Right? But that gap will not be there once we put other tanks there, unless they're smaller tanks that is, but if we choose the same size of tanks as what we have here already or the same size of tanks as what we have here there's a good chance that one tank will not fit which will be a pain right, so I'll have to pick my tanks uh, carefully, what I don't want to do is I, I definitely don't want to I definitely don't want to um, have to drain stuff again because I'm, yeah, I'm just not doing that I'm not doing it so yeah, so that is us for today. What we will do next, guys, tomorrow is a plan to fix the lighting. We're going to fix the, the tank setups inside because all the filters and stuff are all around the wrong way. Like the filters are on this side of the glass here and stuff. So that is something we'll do tomorrow. Fix the lighting and then, uh, yeah. Then that is that one taken care of. Then we can move on to the next job. Hello guys, it's a new day, a new dawn and I'm feeling pretty rough today so we're going to keep it simple. I have some air valves I have to drill up here because we moved some tanks yesterday and the only other thing we're going to do today guys is move some nitrates. So if you're wondering why I'm doing so little every day it's because I have to pace myself. I have to pace myself or I risk getting quite bad, um, more injuries than I already have. Right? So, it's going to be a simple project today. We're going to use we're going to use these little buggers. Let's see if this technology works. It does. So this is an air top here. So I only have about three of these to use to fill in uh, for our air line up here. Then we can move some pipes around. And yeah, my plan was to actually clean a tank and put another tank up here today, but yeah, my back is still not good enough for it, I don't think. So we have lights up here up that we're going to use up there as well basically we're just going to swap some stuff around and that is it today right so let's get on with it all right guys we are up on the shelf here right so this is the plan right we have our like um little drill bit that we need to actually start it then we have the tap and then we're going to add in our little valves here and you can actually see why i'm doing this as well because the wires that, that have come from my old set because this is all my old piping from my old house um, I actually use some of the stuff here, like if I tilt it up, you'll be able to see it a wee bit better, you see. And this stuff is a way past where the tanks are, the tanks come to here, right? So we, what we want to do is we want to take these off and put new taps, new stainless steel part valves here somewhere, right? So we need three. We only need three to take away these ones here. I'm not going to take away these because I can't actually physically close these holes once we've made them, but we're going to put a, a new three ones over here. My, a new three ones, oh my god, my language sometimes is horrific, right? So you will need a drill for this. Right, my Rebio is uh, very trustworthy. So as I said, this is a little starter drill bit, just to get us to drill our holes. And I'm going to do these first. It doesn't matter really where they go, as long as we get them in, right? So. I'm going to try and do this so that you guys can see. I'm going to try and place one here at the back. Let's see if this will play ball. So air should come out of this now, you see it? And we're going to turn this around and we're just going to make sure that our tapping stuff actually it will fit this, it will actually drill into this little hole right because guys you always want to you want to try and do this like one at a time because there's nothing worse than doing loads and loads of stuff and then things like running out of battery power and whatever else right so I like to do things one at a time let's see if we can get this in and I'm just going to do it really slowly you can hear the air there like this 
And I have to remember that this pipe isn't very deep, right? so I don't want to go through and drill too far through. You hear it hitting the other side there. Let's reverse it out. Right, so there we have our hole drilled. I'm actually going to clean off that burr, right? I'm going to get a knife. Burr to burr to burr. And then the next two will be really easy. You see how easy this is to clean off burrs with a little sharp knife. It just makes it easier for the valve to go in. Right, so let's have a little close up view of this. You can actually see the hole there. It's very hard for you guys to see, isn't it? It's right there. I could probably get you underneath a little bit like this right and then we're going to stick in our little valve and right and remember all this air line and stuff is on you're probably better trying to do this when it's off but this is now tapped and it should be a simple case of us pushing this in like this and closing it now you don't want to over tighten these either because yeah, they will break the thread they will strip the thread right so all you do now is close it Then out slowly. Right, so our taps will be there. Right, let's grab our knife. We're just going to knock off the burrs. Very easy to do with a little sharp kitchen knife. Just don't tell the wife because this is the type of knife that she uses to peel vegetables and stuff. It's good enough. Grab your tap and put it in, try and keep it at the same angle as, as you drilled like this, you see how easy it goes in guys when you have a tap right, I, I did my whole room before without a tap and I ended up with bruised and black fingernails right, so get yourself a tap this one's quite tight, let's close it put the next one in try and keep it straight You see how easy this is going in like this. Like that. Right, and I'm just going to close it. The, to me, it doesn't really matter if they all line up. All I care about here is that these don't leak. There you have it. We've tapped it. Right, and over here, you can see where I've done it before. You can see where I've done it before over here. But all these ones here, these just have to be closed and taken off. Right, if, if you struggle to get them off guys, because sometimes it can be hard to come off, you're actually better cutting them off instead of trying to pull on this joint. So I'm just going to cut it. Let me grab a pair of scissors. Or something. Grab a pair of scissors. Let's cut that cable tie. Yeah, it would have been better with a little pair of snips or something. Cut the cable ties. And then we're getting all this mess out of the way of our new tanks that are going to be here in their place, right? So, as I said to you guys at the beginning, I have uh, just way, way too much airline all over the place. So you can see I have like a meter of airline away past here, right? So it's, it's just not needed. Let's um, measure this a little bit. Like this. And we're just going to go simply to the, to the air valve. And then maybe about 10 centimeters past it. Push it on. Like this. Make sure you get it on nice and even, at least past these little ridges. Because then that way it's, it's almost impossible for it to come off. And what I've been doing, guys, is I've been opening these up full and then adding these stainless steel valves to the actual uh, line before it goes into the actual filter. Right, so let's turn this on. This one's actually very stiff, this valve. But it works. Let's get our next one. The two of them are just here. And they, you can see guys as well, look how loose these are. You can almost guarantee that there's air coming out of this. See it? You can almost guarantee. So let's see if I can take this off. 
what we might try and do is actually fix this somehow. I'm not going to pull it because I probably will risk pulling the, the whole thing off. And these are all, I'm showing guys, the reason I'm showing you all this stuff is because I want you to learn from my mistakes, basically. Right, so, yeah, definitely get yourself tarps because this is much better than this. You see, it's a little bit wobbly. This is one I'll have to fix today. Let's push this on. Oh. Yeah, sometimes the, the silicon can get a little bit rigid if it's old. Right, open it up full. You see what I mean here, the way we're doing it? Let's take this one off, close it, close this one. I'm, I'm actually quite shocked at how poorly this one's on. You see it? This one will be leaking air quite a lot. Let's take this one off. Uh, is that the right one there? This one. And let's plop it in over here. Right? So when I'm doing this, guys, all I'm, all I'm doing right, is I'm making sure that we have enough line to go from the back of the tank to here. And that is what we have. Right, and that is good enough. Right, and I'll fix these, this cable in here better once we actually move the filters to the back. So let's open this. And as I said, I'm going to leave these full, fully open, right, and I'm going to add a stainless steel valve. Because this one's just a little bit full, a little bit too fast. And yeah, guys, let's, uh, let's turn the camera off for a second. I'm going to see if I can fix this. I'm, I'm thinking a couple of bits of duct tape or maybe a few cable ties. I've done it before with other holes over like this side here and yeah, you have to put the cable ties on or the duct tape does eventually become loose right so yeah let's give this a try here see if we can fix this one there all right guys are you in focus you should be right so let's get this done here this one because yeah this one is actually loose and if it's loose it's probably leaking a lot of air as well so let's uh Unscrew this as best we can't. Yeah, so actually, I can feel the air coming out around this one. You could probably just hear it. Hear it. So, let's take our little kitchen knife again and we're just going to cut off all these burrs here. Now, there's probably a way to fix these. If any of you guys do know how to fix these permanently, let me know in the comment section below if you can buy like a plug or something or just something that we can use for this. But this is what I'm going to use today. I might actually need to turn off the air pump for this, I think. One second. All right, so I'm actually quite in shock at how quiet my room is when the pumps are actually turned off. And I don't mean the noise from the actual tanks. I mean the actual humming of the pumps themselves, right? So let's get some good old duct tape here. And I just need this to go around the pipe maybe a few times. Let's see, will this be easier said than done? So I want to make sure I go at least over... At least over the middle of the, the thing, you see it? So I pulled this off its little clip there. Like this. And we're going to go directly over the hole. You can probably see the indentation of the hole right there. Let's go over. And this looks like a really crappy fix guys but yeah this works I actually have it in my other stuff as well my other other bits of the room right and if you don't put cable ties on here the air will eventually leak at the sides so let's stick on a couple of cable ties I find that two works okay but I would love if any of you guys know in the comment section below like a permanent fix to this You know, apart from cutting out the pipe and replacing it, like if there's something that can be done. Let's see, what way did I go there? All right, so it's not too shabby. And what I like to do with these guys is this, look. So you pull it as tight as you can, and then you grab a pair of pliers, right, and you're actually going to grab the cable tie, close them, close the pliers, and you're going to twist it towards itself like this, right? And you, you might hear an extra click. This is it getting tighter. You hear? No, I didn't hear, but 
Let's see this one. This one might do it. If it's already very tight, you might not hear it, but... Yeah, that didn't make a noise either. But yeah, these are on tight, tight. You wouldn't be able to pull these off, right? So let's grab our little kitchen knife. I actually find these little kitchen knives the best to cut cable ties as well. Like that. And this is our fix for our air leak from our valve, right? You'd never know that, that was there. Seems like a really crappy fix, but that is what it is, right? This one's tight enough. So there you go, there's our little fix. We've put our air valves in and we're ready to go on to the next stage. All right, Shrimplet, so we talked about this yesterday, right? We have too much lights on these tanks, right? They're not really needed. If you can look in the bottom tanks, right? They all, they have just one set of lights in each one and it's well bright enough, you can see the shrimp. So today we're actually gonna move uh, these um, Aqua L LED slim lights onto these tanks over here to this one there and this one there right so I've already taken the light off of here because I needed some light up the top to actually film that last part you can see it there and we need to remove the light from there and it will go on the second half of our rock up the top here right so we're actually killing two birds with one stone here by using the lighting that we already have and just spread them out a little bit more right so let's grab this light here this LED slim and it's going to go onto our bigger Neo Caradina tank over here right so let's grab this and let's go over here all right so I have used this light on this tank before and I simply have to push it to the ends like this almost to the very end and we're going to let it overhang right so I have a plug on this side as well my main plugs that are on my racks guys are on timers because primarily I only use plugs for my lights right, so this should fit across the top here with a wee bit of luck it may be closer to the edge than I think and this is a 30 watt LED aqua L light so this, this should be better than the lights that were on there already because it's a little bit more powerful and guys if you're a little bit worried that I'm doing this a little bit too close to the limit of the aqua L LED light I actually have a glass plate in the middle here right so there's no way for this light to actually fall into the water there's no way okay, so let's plug this in I'm simply going to put the cable behind the aquariums that are here and all the other cable in this here if you can see me that is and let's plug it in and this one is uh, good to go yeah that is a better light for this tank I think and so that is this one done we need to remove the light from down here because this will be going on our top rack yeah I can feel it in my back already so it's a good plan guys for us to do just what I can when I can so we're going to do this today move the lights and I think tomorrow we'll actually clean that tank I've been talking about cleaning for ages it's given me nightmares thinking about cleaning the tank because my back is so bad when I bend over but it's a job that must be done let me quickly show you these lights so you buy these as a single light like this Right, and all I've done is cable tie them together so they become an angle right and when you do it like this way guys you're actually making all the light concentrated down the way instead of spilling out all over the place so this these lights are really really cheap right these are I think I got them for seven dollars each on sale right and they're 10 watts each so these lights are only 20 watts in total but as you can see and my other tanks like down there, they're perfectly good enough for this right. So let's get this light over there. And this is going to look extremely bad right now. And it will look like this until we get the other tanks in place. So let me just fix the wiring here. And I plan to redo this wiring as well, guys. So instead of having two plugs, they will, we will have one. But I have to buy the connectors for it first. You kind of get the gist of what this is going to look like and I've already done it with the tanks below let me show you all right guys th this is the tanks below on the same light here and you can see on, on the tank even 
my even bigger tank below is in the same light and it's still the bright, the same light's still good light. So we are getting through a power of work, I think. We've done the lights, we've fixed our air system. I didn't show you guys on camera, but above me there was at least another three of those valves that were kind of loose that I also fixed. And I'm actually able to notice on my air system with my sponge filters that there is quite a bit more power. Let me just pick you up so you can see if I can sneak a little cup of coffee. Hmm. Let me just show you this over here because we have the same air, but it's quite noticeable. There's quite a bit more noise. Let me show you. Make your lights over over here. You see them? Now, normally my filtration does work great. It does work great. But you can hear how much more air is coming through this than normal. You hear it? Normally I don't like the, the bit loud splashing, so normally I would turn that down a bit, but it's just to show you how fixing a couple of little issues with leaky air systems can give you so much more power, right? So if you have more power in a tank as well, it basically means that your filtration is going to be a little bit more efficient. Right, and so the next job, guys, is here we need to fix the orientation of all the stuff that's in these top tanks and fix it so it's nice for us to see. So we're actually able to look at things like our little baby shrimp and stuff there. Is that even visible? It is. Get my gist? Let's do that next. Okay there, shrimplets. We had a tiny little break there for lunch, but um, yeah, let's get this uh, show on the road. Right? The, the, this is a great example of a tank that is was built to show you from side on and you can see the issue now where our viewpoint is from this side and that's where all the filtration is right so I'm actually going to move as much of this stuff um, to the very back of the tank above this um, under gravel filter here this one that's in this compartment here and that is so that we can place our filtration to the walls at the back on each side right and then after we'll fix everything else right and it's just a simple case of uh, doing the same with the other tanks and yeah, the lighting is not exactly the best for here. I've tried to cut down the glare as much as possible, but yeah, I think we should um, stop talking and get on with it because yeah, the, the longer I do this, guys, the longer I'm just going to like hurt myself even more and more. Right? So let's just see what happens here. And so we need some of this stuff off the wall in the back. There's an awful lot of buried girls in this tank, so we just need to be a tiny bit careful. I'm simply guys going to put most of the stuff just dead centers. Th things like this where the, the tray is, the feeding dish, I'm going to put it in gently and make sure I don't kill anything. And then it's a simple case of actually just moving our stuff to the back of the tank, right? And just to be a little bit more sure that our filter is going to stick, I'm going to use one of these uh, mellow, mean, foam, what they're called. You guys know what this is. I'm going to use this just to clean the glass a little bit at the back here, just to make sure that our suckers are going to stay. Look at that tiny little baby shrimp there, look at it. So I have to be careful when I do this stuff, guys. You have to be careful, just take your time. Make sure you're not going to squash stuff. Because yeah, I couldn't live with myself if I killed a baby shrimp like, for, for like, uh, oh my god, there's loads of them, guys, I'm not kidding. And the gravel down here, and they look at them like all the little baby shrimp. I don't mean the big thing there, I mean the tiny little things at the end of my finger. Look at them, there's loads of them, right? So, yeah, these guys have obviously had babies. There was an awful lot of buried females in here, and uh, yeah, let's get this talking over and done with. So, I actually added an extra filter to this tank a few days ago because this tank was struggling a little bit. There was loads and loads of buried females, but the survival rate of the young was really quite rubbish. Right, so, this filter here needs to go down as hard as we can get it down the way like this. And then we're going to press the back part of it against the glass like this. And that is it. Now, this is going to look a little bit stupid. Because, uh, because of the orientation of the, these tanks. I'm just going to grab stuff like these leaves right now. I'm try and place them behind the sponges a little bit, just to get them out of the way. Because yeah, this tank will probably be redone in the future. Let's grab this filter here, this little one. It's actually got baby shrimp on the sponge as well. 
This one doesn't want to come off. And sometimes the suckers in these things are too strong, guys. Strong, very strong. <laughs> right, let me push that bark on there. And this is just going to go on the side that you can see from way over here, as far back as I can get it. All the cabling and stuff I'll fix after. I just want to get this as far back as possible. And you remember we cleaned this area here. See little shrimp, look at them. And yeah, what we're basically going to do now guys is just move anything that we can to the center on the middle because our new focal point is this area here. Right, so as a general practice, when I put leaves in, once they become this bad, they go to the back of the tank, like that, to the back of the tank. Alright guys, there really is no good angle from the front from, for me to show you without it being in my way, so yeah, you're going to have to stay there for a second. But you're not going to miss much. I can't believe how many baby shrimp there is. I know I keep saying it, but it affects what we are actually going to be able to do here, so... Uh, let's see, right, all I need to do here basically is make sure the front glass is clean like this and the unevenness in the gravel because it is very uneven will fix itself over time right I'm not gonna move it all like this because I could quite easily push all this to the side to make it all even but the problem is right now that there is on this side anyway, there's a lot of little tiny baby shrimp that you probably can't see. Yeah, and I'm not going to kill them. I'm not going to kill them, so... This is what it is. Just, all I need to do is get this front viewing panel clean. Like this. And we might actually use the... Melamine, melamine... Foam... Here. And this stuff is really good for cleaning glass. This is why I'm using it for these jobs today because it gets that glass that wee bit more clean than you can do by simply scraping and stuff there you go right, so this tank currently looks absolutely awful not gonna lie not gonna lie it's one of the ugliest tanks I probably have <laughs> in my room just for the messiness of it it looks like everything's been just thrown in but it is what it is for now. Right, I'm going to move you guys over to this side over here because I think you'll be able to see over the other side the next tank. Let's get that done. Very simple. This next tank is, it looks like it's much, much cleaner than the other one. Actually, it looks like it's just going to be easier in general for us to um, adapt to this new way. Right, so basically anything at the front here can go at the back. The filtration is fine. All the filtration is on this side, but I don't really care where the filtration is as long as the viewing screen here is clear it so let me get up here a little bit move the slate over a tad and yeah we're just basically going to move stuff to the back like this anything that can be moved to the back should be moved to the back just for our viewing pleasure right so we have um val here i'm just going to gently shake it up like this because guys i want this to be uh, a good place for us to look from so we're just going to basically pick up our valve like this and valve is fine floating right? I find that it's actually a decent plant to have float oh, baby shrimp again mark baby shrimp and the gravel right? so we just need to clear an area at the front that's going to be good enough for us to see and for, for it to be visible like this and I know guys it looks messy as hell I know but we're not aquascapers here, are we? We are shrimp keepers. So all I care about is keeping and breeding shrimp. I'm not too bothered about how it looks, right? So that is that is a fair amount of chunk of space, right? Let's just push the gravel over a tiny bit. I'm just watching for the baby shrimp because I can see quite a few of them here. Like this. And this water will clear. Within an hour, this will be good. Let's get our sponge in, clean the glass. like this and you can see it look it doesn't look like it's that bad but when you do it like this you can see 
just how much rubbish is actually on the glass like this and we're going to do an extra step as well because I noticed there's some marks on this we're going to use the same sponge and we're going to clean the glass on the outside too and when I've done both these tanks here I'll just simply take this over to the the tank, the tap I'll take it over to the tank tap <laughs> right and we'll I give it a rinse because there's some sticky residue on these tanks here and this stuff is it's absolutely awesome guys for removing sticky marks or anything like that that's on the actual front part of the glass so we have a scratch here let's see will that come off it did first time we have a sticky residue mark there from cell tape look at that it comes off first time so this stuff is really really good for cleaning the glass this stuff right, so in Norway I buy mines at a place called Beltima and if you go to the section that they use for tiling they actually use this for polishing the tiles melamine foam there's nothing in it just pure melamine foam but that is what they use right, so here there's a lot of sticky residue from tape let's see will that come off yes it is it is coming off right, it's a little bit harder come off but it's coming off it's much easier doing this than any other way like if you would use uh, for example mineral oil which I have done in the past to remove sticky residue from the front of the tanks that I've had stickers on and anything like that all right so let's see let's give this a final wipe like this you know what's missing from this tank is the feeding dish that's on the other side and there you go that is these two ready we just have to do the final one over here now hi guys I want to show you this tank before we make an absolute mess of it because it's such a pretty tank and yeah it's it's unfortunate that we have to turn all of these tanks to the side because we need to make this the main viewpoint this side could actually be a viewpoint as well because it's on the side but we need to make that side there clear at least so I was thinking maybe move that filter there to this back wall here and maybe try and keep this side open as it is because all that would leave us to do is move this massive stuff here that moss there and then this whole area at the front would be clear and all I have to do after that is clean the glass so I think that is a plan and so you'll see a before image here and we'll have a look after alright shrimplets for this final tank I tried to get you guys in the best possible place that I could but you know sometimes it just doesn't work out that way so I'm going to try and put the cable in in front of you over here because we need to try and move the filtration hopefully this doesn't move the camera hopefully I've actually turned you on <laughs> right, so what we need to do here guys is we need to clean the glass on your side on the back over here because this is where one of the filters is going I think this glass looks quite clean actually it looks quite clean now these guys haven't had minute babies for a while but as you've seen with the other two tanks just because I don't see them all the time doesn't mean that they're not there because yeah there I was actually quite surprised that there was babies in those tanks because I thought there was none little newborns anyway so let's um, unstick this filter here these guys are stuck so well oh. let's see it's just a simple case pulling this one up because the last one was really hard to come off let's see I'm just making sure that the filters are clean move that light again and I'm going to push this over now this cable is very very short now this is an issue the cable is too short so let me just take that off just now and we'll put the filter in place and then we'll fix the cable in now, so I want this to go to the back look at all the lovely shrimp in there look at all the lovely shrimp right, so this uh, thing at the front here can go near the back as well stuck on as well I'm trying to think where to put this because I don't I actually don't want this side to be covered so let's just put you there 
Right, and anything on here, yeah, there's a lot of shrimp in here too. All these bits of moss. This side here is going to be the main viewing port. But this moss here can stay there because you guys can see it on that side just as well, right? So this moss here can go at the back in this corner. And it's actually good enough actually already. This. It's actually good enough. Just make sure these filters are stuck in this one. Looks like it came loose. And uh, yeah, let me clean this front glass here because it is pretty dirty on my side. Now I'm using a stainless steel blade on this for this because I can actually see that the, the algae is quite thick on the glass on this side because this was the, the back of the tank before. Or the side of the tank, sorry. So I'm just making sure I'm cleaning this well. Because yeah, this is going to be the secondary or primary view important. The side that you're on is going to be the, the other one. A lot of red zebra hunters in here. There's enough red ones now for us to be able to start another colony, I think. Let's see, I'm just going to give this a going over twice. I actually don't see any teeter tot babies in here at all, none. You know, normally you see like the odd one in the gravel. There's loads of them that are like just under a centimeter. I'm going to use this melamine foam again on this side. Let's give this a clean. Because I do it now, it'll last quite a while. Because you're really not overfeeding the tanks or anything. I did notice there's an awful lot of uh, Duckweed in this tank. Let me just clean this side too while we're at because this could be our, our other viewpoint. You see all the algae on here? Hopefully you guys can see it. Watch this edge as I run it along. It should change green, see? A little bit. Change it a little bit. So I need to find a piece of I need to find a piece of hose for that part, right, but like we said in, in the beginning on the other tanks, I'm just going to quickly, guys, do this side, just a little quick clean, because it is fairly nasty from where I've not cleaned the glass before. You know, stuff that's never seen light, basically. Or you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So let's uh, clean this panel here, because this is going to be another viewing point. Now it's not optimal having that filter there, but this is from a side side view. Look at all these shrimp down here, look at them. Let me grab a new towel, that one's a little bit wet. Let's just quickly rinse this off, dry it off. And uh, we're almost done, I think. We're almost done here. I wonder if I can get you guys up a little bit higher to show you all the shrimp here, because there's loads of them. You see, up you go. And I'll pan you down and you can look at these shrimp over here, you see them? There's a lot of zebra, zebra, fancy zebras in here, red and black ones. As I say, right now there's no, no real amounts of tiny baby ones. Well, you look at them guys and I'm talking to you because I think this will be the end clip for this week. While I'm talking to you, um, I just want your opinion on this format. Do you like it? And do you want to see more of it? Because yeah, I, I actually enjoy this stuff where I actually enjoy this stuff where I'm actually doing stuff in the shrimp room and not trying to like over edit videos, right? Because you'll see that in my future content. I'm I'm not gonna do this anymore when I'm trying to be something I'm not. You know? And we talked about stainless steel valves before, did we? Didn't we? I wonder if I have one here. Let me have a little look. I don't know if I have though. I do. I, no, I don't. I don't. We're going to put a plastic one on here. Just for now. Just so we can get this filtration on because I need I need to do some stuff. Alright, so I'm putting the air back on. Then all this light in here, guys, all the light that's above here. Well, uh, it'll be better once we get other tanks here built because I'm not going to tidy up the wiring and stuff until we have our tanks and stuff in place because the wiring will change. I can't see because of the light. 
this cable is so short on this filter it's to go under yeah so you want lots and lots of leaves in your tank and yeah, that's why I'm using lots of katapa leaves and walnut leaves you turn it around a wee bit so it's facing this way and there you go this tank is done barring the wiring being done this stuff here because this will all get tidied up and hidden this tank, oh pardon me this tank is done let me see how does it look? it's going to look bad for a little while until we're done but guys yeah pan around to my glorious face hello but that is this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it, as I said before. Um, if you would please like and subscribe if you're new to my channel as well. Liking it uh, helps my channel grow. And guys, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Happy shrimp keeping.